Okay, so I wanted to record a video on how I use large language models to study. Um, this is a little bit of different video from my technical types of videos. So I wanted to at least get a little creative, show you the ways I use um, ChatGPT, but broadly any large language model for the purposes I'm trying to get out of it. So I'm gonna start with showing you um, the end result of the code um, that, or essentially, portion of the code that created this specific visual that you're seeing here. Now, most certifications that you're going to pursue in any certifying body, um, regardless of technology or beyond, will typically have some form of exam objectives. And now these exam objectives are essentially telling you what the exam or what to expect, what will be covered in that regard. Now, what I typically find with most of these exam objectives is they obviously change um, depending on what type of certification you're doing every six months to about a year, depending on the vendor specifically. Well, with that being said, there is quite a lot of information to take in and track in general. So I work best with what is known as mind maps. And what you're seeing here is a mind map from Whimsical, essentially a service that allows you to create mind maps, um, but also create from um, AI specifically. And the reason I come across this is you've likely seen um, the use of plugins. And if you can see here, I'm going to show you um, shortly how we got all this input, but I'll start from the end. Um, essentially, I created a mind map based on the exam objectives that were retrieved from here. Now, typically, if I do a copy paste of these specific artifacts or text to a large language model, sometimes depending on the um, format of the text that you're trying to um, take out and generate something out of are typically not interpreted the correct way. They typically, the best way to get better outputs from large language models specifically are using some form of markdown when we're thinking about content scraping and then feeding that information in. And that's typically the best results I can find. Now to use this specifically, what I did was I took this specific URL and I'm gonna show you um, shortly through the code I wrote and I passed it into a specific AI um, known as the Reader AI API from Gina. Now what Gina does is essentially allow you to use their API to scrape information that you're looking for, whether that's a PDF, whether that's just HTML content in general. And it cleans that information so the large language model can essentially read the context of that and understand it. And if you can see here, this just shows you a quick example of what it actually does. It gives a title um, with the example domain name and markdown format, a URL source, and then the content that essentially is marked down. And it makes it more in interpretable to the large language model itself. So the reason I'm showing this is just so you can understand how I use these tools to supercharge most of my um, tech knowledge, but also when I am studying for a certification, what are some of the first um, preliminary steps I take before I go down a path, right? I wanna make sure I invest my time wisely, but also that I'm studying the right things. So this is typically where I start, okay? So now that we've gotten that, that out of the way, what I'll do is I'll move over to our code. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of wrangling to get back um, to <laughs> my Visual Studio. But for simplicity purposes, um, you'll see that this code right here is just calling our specific reader API um, from Gina. This is just taking our URL and just appending that to the specific Gina AI reader, okay? And based on that, it's gonna give us a content preview. I just did this as the full thing so you can see what is essentially being um, overridden to our specific markdown language. Now, remember that we will also validate before we send to Whimsical specifically, the content that is specifically related to the exam itself. So that's the only thing um, that obviously you would need to validate, okay? So I'm gonna hit save here. And I'm also going to go in the background, copy my link. And once we hit run on this, 
And if you see this specific um, no results up here, there's gonna be a reason to that, give me a second. So I'm going to send that. And now we can see that it cleaned all that information from that site. And we can see here directly in the terminal, all the data that is essentially marked down. Now notice these are all numbered for you, right, sequentially, so 1.1, so we know specifically from our objectives based on this preview that I encoded here where we're gonna start at, okay? So when we open up our markdown specific output.markdown file, then we are gonna start here. And notice that we also have, we capture 12% of the exam. So we're gonna instruct the whimsical diagrams to annotate that as well. So what we're gonna do is then we'll take a look at our output. This is why you see here, architecting. We see we have our information. So we simply copy where our objectives start, where our objectives end, and then we'll instruct Whimsical to create us a mind map based on that, okay? So the way we do that specifically is accessing the plugin. Now I'm going to switch over to my, when it does allow me, let me see here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this information, let me switch over to our specific visual. Let me go back. Okay, so to recap, what we did was we took the information from our specific Google Cloud Machine Learning Engineer objectives. We put that into the custom GPT to create us a mind map. Now you'll see here this wants to talk to that service itself. I'm allowing this. I've used the service for quite some time. So now it's going to send this to Whimsical. And look how fast it's created our specific mind map. Now this one's a little bit more enhanced than my last one. Um, so this one might print out part two here. But to quickly go through some of the areas of what I instructed, I told it based on the specific parameters provided that I also want the weight of the topic itself from those objectives. So we can see here, I have architecting low code machine learning solutions, 12% of the exam and all the subtopics about that, right? And then I can see here that collaborating within and across teams to manage data and models is 16%, so a little bit larger, right? We notice some um, players that I've covered before, such as Vertex AI in here, Vertex AI Workbench. And then scaling prototypes in machine learning models a little bit higher on the scale. But we see here specifically all the areas that we need to consider, um, but also the subtopics of those, right? So deploying end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines, it looks like it talks about Kubeflow, TFX components, data and model validation. So you can see here, this is pretty robust in nature. Now, since it already has our topics, now I can take these topics and then start actually digging a little bit further, right? And then using this as my specific playground to add notes that I'm taking, um, resources and things of that nature. So hopefully that helps bridge together how I kind of use some of these tools. Um, broadly whimsical will be required if you're trying to keep this right um, maybe you prefer something else uh, such as like a, a mind map on draw.io maybe you want something more custom like on xcali draw something open source as well um, this is just one of those quick plugins i found and use quite a lot i've used it for the aws security exam and some others um, it's really helped me organize my specific exam objectives, but then also tailor my studying methods um, from a time savings perspective as well. So hopefully if this helps you, feel free to like um, this video, um, share it with your friends as, as you need, and let me know if anything else can be added that helps you out.